looks like difficult and simple at the same time. I know that sounds weird, right? Just because it doesn't sound easy, that doesn't, well, okay, scratch that. Let me explain. So <laughs> playing a groove like that or playing a sequence of notes like that, it's like, it's simple because I'm not moving that much. Like I'm not moving all the way up and, you know, up and down the neck. Like, you know, it's not crazy, but the sequence of notes is the tough part. It's like, it's so many notes so close together. It's hard to, you know what I mean? Like, it's like learning your modes, right? Learning your modes, you got one, It's like so many different notes that it's like one note difference between each scale that you have to remember is very intricate. You know, you have to remember that one, that one note changes the whole entire scale. It's, it's like that. The notes are so close together, it's hard to remember. So putting the sequence of notes together, it really, really helps a lot. So something like that, using open strings, Like I'm not even moving from this part of the fretboard. Sorry to interrupt, but I had to mention this. If you're serious, only if you're serious about taking your bass playing to the next level, I get tons of questions all the time. Derek, do you have programs? Do you have lessons? Do you have a course? Absolutely, we have everything you need at Bass Nation Academy. We have courses, we have live classes, you have more direct access to me um, to be able to answer your questions and get feedback. We have a video Q&A section. It's a ton of stuff, check it out for yourself. Link is gonna be in the description. Don't wanna take too much time away from the lesson, but anyway, had to mention that. Check you guys later. Anyway, so the groups of notes are so close together. I'm not, I'm barely moving my hand placement, but I can get away with a bunch of notes at the same time. And it's something that I mentioned last lesson or maybe in the pivots lesson or something like that to help you remember or memorize uh, a bunch of notes, like maybe a long solo or something like that. It's just grouping the notes together, right? So you have small little phrases inside of a long phrase. You might think, oh man, that's a long bass line. But I'm thinking in myself, I'm thinking a bit of as like four sections. <laughs> Right. That's one section by itself. That's the next section. That's the next section. So it's like it's like three or four different sections that I have to worry about. If I, I can break it up even more than that, but I'm grouping it that way so I can just put all of the sections together once I practice it. There it is. That last section right there and i can i can break it up even more than that i can break it up it depends on your level or your style of learning or you, where you are um your ability to be able to retain information it may be smaller it may be shorter i should say you know you you might have a shorter retention time um for you to be able to mem uh, memorize notes and memorize you know phrases and things like that or too many things at one time like i'm a huge multitasker like i can do like ten thousand things at one time right um most musicians <laughs> kind of are but my retention is is really not that like it's not super it's not like it's not like that great so I still have to work on it anyway let's go back to the groove crazy little groove that I just came up with a lot of ideas that I already do nothing that I've never played before but the sequence of notes are I'm trying to align them to where they make a consistent groove to where they line up in the measure right so that first part is is pretty, I, I would say pretty difficult. It sounds simple, but it's a sequence of pull-offs and you know hammer-ons. So, so pull off, slide, hammer, right? You have to make sure you get to the A before you hammer on the B. The hard movement, just practicing that alone is just gonna be crazy. I mean, you can position that whichever way you like. You can do four, three, uh, four, four, two, two, one, two. That's weird. But what I do is I just, I just use one and three. It just makes it a little bit easier. So. Da, 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 da. Just have to make sure you get to the A before you hammer on the B. Anyway, uh, so the sequence of notes is not tough at all. So I'll show you guys the sequence of notes. So you got A, B, C, D, E. It's so funny, I'm going up the scale. A, B, C, D, E, G, A, B, right? All right, so that's the first set of notes, right? Da, 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 da. It's almost like I'm spelling out a, a C major arpeggio, right?
Yeah, it's like I'm, I'm spelling out a C major arpeggio with, you know, notes to lead up to it. So we got A, B, C. Those are like my lead-in notes. So I'm playing elements of uh, uh, pentatonic scale too, but I mean, you can think of it as just starting on A. Yeah, so you can think of it as like an A Dorian, right? Da -da 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 Yeah, like an A Dorian, like you're starting off on A Dorian. Anyway, so you have that sequence, da -da 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 ending on the B, uh, and then second section or second category. So we got E, F sharp, A, D. There it is. So two open strings back to back. So you're utilizing a lot of open strings with this too. And then we have E, F sharp. So the two little arpeggiated movements. All right, and then I'm ending on the E. It just, it, you know, it, it sounds, it sounds really cool when you're slapping this or just kind of when you're plucking it using your index fingers. So that's a whole nother level, right? Like, I wouldn't say level, but that's a, a whole nother thing that's separate from the actual left hand that you have to think about because now I'm using index middle uh, thumb, right? So you have to be intricate on where you land your finger. So first I would recommend just kind of plucking this out first, right? So yeah, anyway, that, that first part in the beginning, you can leave that off. It does, you, know, it, you don't have to play that. Uh, you could just leave it open, which actually I recommend that first because it's a lot, it's a lot of notes, right? So you just want two, two eight, four. <laughs> just that much. I'm using a lot of uh, like hammer-ons kind of things like that, just with open notes, it's, it's kind of tough to play every single note, which I would recommend. I do that now only because I just want to by bypass it so, so we can, you know, move along with the lesson, but. And you also get a different feel when you don't play every single note with this style. I don't know what it is about this style when you're playing open notes like this. Mm -hmm. 